Episode 139, Inseparable. After H-World's press conference ended, Richard organized for Emma to go to a meeting at Her Vision. In the evening, he drove her home. Although you have three days off, you should report to me before you go anywhere or do anything, so I can be prepared, he said as he turned to look at her. As for gossip, you've always shielded yourself from it, so I won't say any more. I know what to do, she nodded with her eyes closed. Also, send Lisa the flight number. I'll book the flight myself. Why? He looked at her questioningly before figuring it out. Do you wish to bring someone else? No way. You're working. The probability of having photos taken is far too high. She opened her eyes to look at him silently. Are you guys really that inseparable? He asked. Yes, inseparable, she replied with a gentle smile. What exactly do you see in that man? If he really cares about you, how could he watch you get in trouble so many times and not help you out? Richard couldn't quite understand her persistence. In his eyes, a man that relied on a woman was ridiculous, especially in such a glamorous and complex industry. If he truly understood Emma, he wouldn't rely on her. She smiled as usual while Lisa rolled her eyes in the back seat and smirked. This is only because you don't know that her husband is Eric Roberts, she thought. Do you think that a simple manager like yourself could see the boss whenever you want? If you find out who he is, you'll be terrified. You agreed you wouldn't interfere in my personal life, said Emma. He wanted to continue speaking, but her words were enough to silence him. He nodded in defeat. What else can I say? I'm sure about what I'm doing, and I'm well aware of the type of person I'm in love with, she answered firmly. She was helped out of the van by Lisa before she disappeared through the luxurious gates of Tribeca. Although she had explained things clearly, Richard still felt that a man who depended on a woman was bad news. However, H-World was currently a mess, so his main priority was to return to the office first to help Charlotte patch things up. Emma, are you really not planning to tell Mr. Collins about Eric? Lisa asked with an expectant smile as she followed closely behind her. I really want to tell him. Emma opened the door to the villa and walked inside. She smiled warmly as she breathed in the heavenly scent of dinner being cooked. I don't completely trust him yet. Lisa could also smell the aroma of food. Thinking of Eric's cooking, her mouth began to water. I want to eat too. Then let's eat together. Emma didn't mind at all. Although she didn't want to disturb the couple from having time to themselves, Lisa couldn't resist the temptation of the alluring smell of the cooked meal. The three sat down together at the dinner table. However, at that moment, Lisa noticed that Emma was eating something completely different from her and Eric. She was surprised for a moment before understanding dawned on her. When the two of you have dinner together, do you prepare separate meals? What do you think? Emma smiled. Do you really think I could eat the same thing as you guys? Don't I need to maintain my figure? Wow, your husband sure is great. Lisa sucked up to Eric by flattering him. Meanwhile, he continued to look through the documents in front of him, a serious expression on his face. Emma watched her husband before instinctively removing the papers from his hands. She was worried that reading and eating would be bad for his digestion. He turned his head to look at her and gently patted her head without resisting her. Lisa observed their actions and gently put down her silverware. She then quietly got up to leave. I think it's time for me to go. But are you not going to finish eating? asked Emma. No, I probably won't be eating here again. She waved as she grabbed her handbag from the sofa and left Tribeca. She felt like a commoner that had intruded on the palace of a noble king and queen. She felt completely out of place. After dinner, 
Emma and Eric leaned against each other as they enjoyed a film together. Disregarding their celebrity status, the couple were just like any other ordinary husband and wife. They were watching a documentary about caring for stray dogs. Emma was so touched, she began to cry on his shoulder as he helplessly handed her tissues. Is it really that emotional? Emma nodded. However, under the flashes of blue light coming from the screen, she stole a look at the side of Eric's perfectly sculpted face. It wasn't just because the film was so moving. It was also because of the man watching it with her. The world's most attractive man was exceptional at work. But at the same time, he was also the most supportive person at home. No matter how many riches someone had, Nothing could compare to waking up to find a glass of warm water beside the bed. His simple gestures showed her how much he cared for her. Eric, over the next three days, will you be working to clear up your schedule for Moscow? Actually, I can't go by myself. No, you can't, he interrupted her. Moscow is a relatively unfriendly place. I don't want anything to happen to you. She didn't say anything else. She simply kissed him on the chin. Thinking about Richard's scorn toward Eric, the smile on her face grew. Wait until you meet him, she thought. Then you'll know whether he's a man that depends on his woman. After a whole day of defeat, Ariadne had nowhere to turn. All she wanted to do was find the opportunity to put Ariel to good use. However... She seemed to have forgotten that Ariel had never been one of her artists. Although she was currently suspended by Star Age, she was in no way related to Ariadne. She frantically went looking for her. She searched in places that Ariel normally visited. However, Ariel wasn't picking up her phone. It wasn't until late that night that her call finally connected. Hello, Ariel? I'm at Color Night Bar. Come and join us, she responded before hanging up. Ariadne had a bad feeling about this, but she simply thought that Ariel was letting off some steam by going out and singing a few songs at a bar. However, after rushing over there, she found her wearing a hat and doing an obscene dance. Her exaggerated movements were completely inappropriate. Ariadne ran straight over and grabbed her by the wrist. However, Ariel was not in a full state of awareness. She pulled her hand away and yelled, Who are you? Looking at the girl's confused expression, the word drugs popped up in Ariadne's mind. But she's only 16 years old, she thought, horrified. Come with me. I don't want to go. Ariel shoved her away before grabbing a bottle and whacking it over her head. What's wrong with you? I don't even know you. Why are you holding on to me? After hearing the loud crashing noise, everyone around them stopped dancing and turned to stare. Noticing Ariadne unconscious on the floor, Ariel pulled down her hat and bolted out of the bar in fright. Due to the dim lighting, no one got a good look at Ariadne's face. They just surrounded her and asked in a concerned tone, Are you okay? She came to her senses and rubbed her head painfully. At that moment, someone asked her, That person that just hit you, was that Emma Miller? It looked like her. Episode 140 It was Emma. Emma? Hearing the name, Ariadne felt like someone had switched on a light bulb in her head. She turned to everyone surrounding her. I hope you can keep it a secret. Don't worry, we won't tell anyone, they reassured her. Are you sure you don't need to go to the hospital? Under such circumstances, how could word not spread, she thought. No need. She stood up with the help of a few onlookers. After rubbing her head and making sure she was okay, she left the night color bar. As she returned to her car, she tried to remember how Ariel had looked when she saw her. She was wearing a hat, so no one had recognized her. As a 16-year-old girl, it was illegal for her to enter a bar, so she must have used a fake ID. 
Since she was taking drugs, her future didn't look too promising. However, being able to take advantage of the situation by blaming Emma made all her pain and suffering worthwhile. The name Mini Emma has finally become useful, she thought. Besides protecting Ariel's reputation, Ariadne wanted to ruin the deal between Emma and her vision. She stopped her car on the side of the road and gave the editor Shirley a phone call. She told her that she had a huge scandal to expose and requested to meet her in person. Shirley already knew about everything that had happened at H-World earlier that day. Although she didn't want to deal with Ariadne, she had been told that it was something to do with her vision. So she handed over her address after a moment of consideration. Time passed quickly, and it was already late into the night. The terms Emma, drugs, and fight slowly raised their way up in the search rankings online. Ariadne arrived at Shirley's home, holding her phone in excitement. She sat on the sofa and handed her phone over to her. Emma is tainted. You can't use her for your cover. Shirley held her head with her left hand and held the phone with her right. She threw the phone back at Ariadne. I'm sure you're aware of whether this is really Emma. Ariadne, as your friend, I'll give you a fair warning. Emma has someone supporting her. Even if you flip the sky upside down, you won't be able to lay a finger on her. Who is it? Ariadne was stunned. She hadn't expected to hear something like this from Shirley. I won't tell you, said Shirley. But don't impulsively go against her. Otherwise, you may not be able to stay in New York for too long. That's impossible, said Ariadne. If Emma had someone backing her, she wouldn't torture herself by climbing up the ladder one step at a time like this. So you're aware she's suffering. Then can you use less vile methods and do some good deeds instead to build some merit for yourself? Shirley sneered. Ariadne, I know you've been kicked out of H-World, but I have something I want to say to you. A pitiful person like you must have a reason for sinking so low. Make a move against Emma and watch how she'll also make your life a living hell. Ariadne responded angrily, glaring at her. She finally understood what people meant when they said the phrase, kicking someone when they're down. The entertainment industry had always been like that. She was down on her luck at the moment, so it was normal to be bullied by everyone else. Even if you aren't thinking for your own sake, you should at least think about your mother, said Shirley. Spending your life trying to trample others will definitely lead to a bad ending. Hearing this, Ariadne suddenly stood up and stared furiously at her. That's enough. I just want to know who's backing Emma. Shirley didn't answer her question. Instead, she burst out into laughter. Ariadne's heart sank. She picked up her phone, ready to leave. At that moment, Shirley spoke up again. Just wait and see, Ariadne. Tomorrow, the tables will turn. Ariadne left her home without turning back. Fear was growing inside her. If Shirley's words are true, and Emma really does have someone backing her, then what can I use to fight against her under my current circumstances, she thought. No, don't scare yourself. Let's wait to reassess the situation tomorrow. During the night, comments about Emma taking drugs were spreading like wildfire online and causing quite a stir. There was plenty of interest, but the thought of Emma getting her revenge against people many times in the past made everyone hesitant to jump to conclusions. Firstly, there wasn't any evidence. And secondly, they developed a trust in her character. At two in the morning, Eric received a phone call from Luke. Sir, Emma's in the news again. I already sent someone to investigate. The person who took drugs was Ariel. Because they look similar, Emma got targeted by the false rumors. Eric glanced at his phone and gently freed Emma from his embrace as he headed into the study room. Have you found any evidence? There were plenty of people on the scene, so I was able to gather evidence, said Luke. However, none of it's HD quality. 
Contact the main media sources, hand over the evidence, and make them change their search terms, ordered Eric. As for the information I asked you to retrieve before regarding Ariel's school life, it's time to make use of it. However, hold back a little. I want to leave it for the grand finale. I want to see who else wants to stand in Emma's way. Lucas made a sound of agreement. After a short pause, he reported, By the way, sir, this scandal was started by Ariadne. Hearing this, Eric's expression darkened. Afterwards, he responded in an extremely cold voice. Do I need to teach you how to deal with someone who hasn't learned their lesson? No need. Luke understood what he meant. Since Ariadne enjoys going into battle, she shouldn't dream of ever having a day of peace again for the rest of her life, Eric thought. Ariadne waited in her car all night. After waking up the next morning, the top search term had changed from Emma to Ariel. She closed her phone in fear. Her mind endlessly ran through the warning Shirley had given her. Emma has someone helping her. How could she have someone supporting her? This is impossible. Emma's been bullied before. If there really was such a person, then he mustn't truly care about her. She, at most, could only be a mistress. She put away her phone. She originally wanted to look for Lucas, but as she drove there, she received a phone call from the hospital. Miss Clark Sanders, please come to the hospital to pay your mother's medical bills. I don't have any money left. Who am I going to get the money from to pay them? She screamed in response. Well, then you have no choice but to come and take your mother home and take care of her yourself. How am I supposed to take care of a paralyzed person? She thought. Also, if people find out, how can I deal with it? She had no choice but to turn the car around and drive to the hospital. As for the incident about Ariel taking drugs, the public were in an uproar. Even Ariel's parents stepped out to try and clear her name in an interview. That can't possibly be my daughter, said the mother. If it's my daughter, I'll die right in front of you. Is that my daughter's nickname Minnie Emma? Since she looks so similar to Emma, how can you guys be certain it wasn't her taking drugs instead of accusing my Ariel? I know my daughter better than anyone else. There's no way she would ever take drugs. It must be Emma. She must have used some devious methods to pass the blame. It wasn't my daughter. It was Emma. Episode 141, The Truth Comes Out. Sitting in her office, Charlotte couldn't hold back a snort of derision as she watched the clip of Ariel's mother crying. Both of them are so two-faced, she thought. Does anyone really think they're for real? However, in order to settle the rumors, Charlotte instructed her staff to release a statement. She wanted the public to know that Emma had H-World support. She knew that Emma hadn't done drugs, and she wanted the public to have faith in her. As soon as H-World's statement came out, Louisa, Ariel's mother, released her own statement. She claimed that underhanded people in the entertainment industry were trying to destroy her daughter and blamed the online community for the effects of their negative comments on her child. Because Emma was currently taking a few days off from work, Charlotte called to reassure her that she wouldn't need to take any action. Emma was enjoying her time off. While Eric worked, she lay with her head on his lap, watching the entertainment news on TV. Eric had asked Luke to retrieve all his documents and bring them home. He'd also asked Luke to put out the message that he was not up to coming into the office. However, Emma knew this was just an excuse. There was so much going on at the moment that he didn't want to leave her all alone. I want to drop by the police station this afternoon, Emma said as she lay on his lap. Okay, Eric nodded without asking why. He understood that even if most people believed she was innocent of wrongdoing, she still needed to present evidence. 
If she missed her chance to clear her name now, she ran the risk of having this rumor used against her later on. For the incident with Ariel to be completely over, there was still a little more to be done, but Eric didn't tell Emma about it. Right now, the majority of comments online were not from the mother hens who supported Ariel, but from kids her age who felt she wasn't setting a good example. They wanted their idols to be free from scandal. To them, she was a complete embarrassment. If Ariel got blacklisted in the future, it wouldn't only be the entertainment industry that had shut her out. It seemed like the entire country was no longer on her side. Louisa's statement and video didn't seem to do her daughter's image any good. In fact, they made it worse. But Louisa didn't give up. She went to an even greater extreme and publicly threatened suicide. And then she checked herself into the hospital. After an attempt at self-harm, she agreed to participate in an interview with the media. As a mother, I feel terribly guilty that I haven't been able to protect her and that I have allowed her to be hurt this way. I'm in the hospital because I feel too ashamed to continue living this way. As for that devil who won't let a 16-year-old girl alone, just wait and see who God shows mercy to in the end. The reporters filled the room like sardines and pointed their microphones at Louisa. Miss Lewis, are you calling Emma Miller the devil? Who else would I be talking about? She responded, glaring at them. Do you think Emma took drugs and then tried to frame your daughter? If that's the case, then why did you report it? The reporter pushed for an answer. As I'm sure you're aware, Age World Entertainment's already gone to the police. Are you afraid of an investigation? Louisa didn't know how to respond. She looked slightly panicked as she said, I don't know anything about that. Don't ask me. All I know is that my daughter is innocent. The reporters looked at each other. They didn't know what to say either. Just leave, Louisa continued. I want to be left alone. Get out. Go. The reporters could tell that Louisa was trying to sway public opinion in favor of her daughter. But it was clear that she was only lying to herself. After all, there'd been plenty of witnesses the night that Ariel had appeared at the night color bar. As more and more evidence began to surface, the situation became more of a mess. Louisa continued to pressure Emma through her public statements and harangue the online community. Amid all this noise, Emma finally made an appearance. Dressed in plain clothes and accompanied by her manager, she showed up at the police station. She didn't make a statement or attempt to explain herself. Instead, she used the most direct action to prove her innocence. She took a drug test. The reporters then questioned Louisa about whether she knew Emma had gone to take the drug test. They asked if she was so confident that her daughter was innocent that she would have taken Ariel to get tested as well. Of course, she didn't dare. She was well aware of what her daughter had done. That was why she was trying to turn everyone's attention to Emma. She never expected Emma to go directly to the police station. She thought Emma would do what everyone else seemed to do, make a statement to the public and let them decide. That afternoon, Emma revealed the results of her drug test. The result was negative. She'd never taken illegal drugs in her life. Out of all the times Ariel had tried to make her look bad, this one was the worst. And now, it had backfired spectacularly. The online community saw Emma's results and were outraged. Why was it that every time Ariel did something wrong, she tried to pass it off on Emma? Was it simply because she looked like Emma? Almost immediately, an anti-Ariel alliance came together online consisting of fans who would no longer acknowledge the existence of the mini-Emma. To them, there was only one Emma, and they wanted everyone to stop being an accessory to Ariel's bullying. Ariel, along with her mother, had suffered a major slap to the face. This didn't deter the reporters, however. In fact, their questioning became even more intense and aggressive. 
Miss Lewis, Emma Miller had a negative drug test. She's been innocent the entire time. Yet you've continued to claim that Emma framed your daughter. Now that you've seen the evidence, what are your thoughts? Is it because Ariel resembles Emma that you tried to divert the public's criticism onto her? How has Emma offended you? Why did you put her through all of this? Ma'am, is your daughter the only one in the world who's important to you? Is that why you think Emma deserves to have her name tarnished? Louisa sat on her hospital bed, facing the barrage of questions. Despite having a teenage daughter, she was still young. But this incident had made her feel physically and mentally ancient. Finally, she couldn't take the questions any longer. She covered her face with a blanket and broke down in tears. I'm sorry, she sobbed. I know I've wronged Emma. I just didn't want my daughter's career destroyed. Do you think it was okay to destroy someone else's career to protect your daughter? One reporter asked. After hearing this question, Louise's lips twitched before she finally responded. I was wrong, she said reluctantly. I didn't set a proper example for Ariel, and I'm so sorry for what I've done to Emma. She was innocent. I know my apology isn't enough to make up for all the trouble I've caused, but it's all I have to offer. Miss Lewis, where is your daughter? Asked another reporter. What does she have to say about all this? But Louisa couldn't answer. Episode 142. A Violent Past Comes to Light. After the truth of the drug scandal was exposed, Ariel hid out at a friend's house, too afraid to make an appearance. And after seeing the videos of her mother suffering on her behalf, she'd started to regret what she'd done. However, she thought now that the truth was out, she'd be able to ride this latest wave of public criticism and arrive safely on the shore. She'd never imagined that things would continue to escalate. On the same day that the truth of the drug scandal broke, the media started spreading news that Ariel had a violent past. Somehow, reports came out confirming that she'd instigated the beating of a female classmate two years earlier. The injuries had been so severe that the classmate was now disabled. After that incident, Ariel had changed her name and moved to New York. Everyone was stunned by this information, and in an instant, her name became tarnished. Who could have ever thought that this angelic-looking child had been so violent? And to make matters worse, it seemed that Ariel wasn't really 16. Her parents had lied about her age to protect her from prosecution as an adult. She was now 18, not 16, as her family had led everyone to believe. And now, the police were searching everywhere for her. Looking at the explosive news stories, Ariel was in a complete panic. She paced back and forth inside her friend's house in fear. She no longer had anyone to lean on and no one to turn to. And she wondered, what am I going to do? She had met her friend Rose, who was also a model, at the model search competition. But after seeing the news and realizing that Ariel had something rotten at her core, Rose gathered up Ariel's belongings and tossed them out the door. You need to leave, Ariel. I can't believe I actually helped you badmouth Emma. You're a liar and a cheat, and I need you to get out. Ariel didn't know what to do. She was completely out of options. She started to sob and threw herself at her friend's feet. Rose... I'm begging you, don't kick me out. If I go out there, I'm dead. The reporters and police will never let me go. Rose didn't bother to respond. She just got on her phone and said, I can't believe I ever became friends with you. If you don't leave right now, I'm calling the police. Ariel stood up and tried to snatch the phone out of her hand, but Rose sensed her movement and quickly pushed her away. Ariel stumbled a little before falling and scraping her face on the corner of a coffee table. The corner of the table was sharp and left a bloody gash across her cheek. 
She instinctively placed her hand to her cheek. She was in so much pain, she almost passed out. But Rose didn't put away the phone. She called the police to tell them that Ariel was there, and then she called an ambulance. When the police arrived, she said, I'm going to tell them the truth, because I'm not like you. Ariel was devastated. The gash on her cheek was long and deep. Unless she had plastic surgery, she would be left with a nasty scar. The police finally arrived at Rose's home and took Ariel into custody. Poor Louisa. After watching the video of her daughter being taken away by the police with a bloody bandage on her face, she fainted. It was going to be a long time before she regained her strength. It seemed that all of New York was wrapped up in the news of this young model. The fact that she had so many disturbing secrets was frightening. But people also felt duped by her. Her glamour and prowess as a model had led everyone to think that she was innocent. Now that the truth was out, they were angry at her and at themselves for being taken in. Ariadne was also paying close attention to the developments in Ariel's scandal. At that moment, apart from being shocked, she was also scared. She just lost her job and her main source of income. Her mother was paralyzed and unable to get out of bed. Although she had a younger brother, he only made enough to take care of himself. She didn't know what she was going to do. She had to find a job, and fast. Fortunately, the outside world believed she'd resigned willingly from H-World, rather than having been fired. Perhaps it wouldn't be so hard to find a decent job. But she hadn't expected that the police would end up bringing her into the station for an interrogation. So many witnesses at Nightcolor Bar had seen her arguing with Ariel. It was unavoidable that she, too, would be suspected of taking drugs. Ariadne desperately tried to explain the situation, but the police insisted on giving her a drug test. Ariel's incident was already at the forefront of everyone's mind. Once it was known that Ariadne had been taken in for questioning, the public couldn't help but suspect that Ariadne had also taken drugs. Inside the cold police station, Ariadne realized that she had no friends or relatives she could contact. In the end, her only option was to rely on Lucas and give him a call. When he didn't show up at first, she gave up hope. But after several hours, he finally appeared. After all that she'd been through in the past few days, Ariadne's self-esteem had taken a hit. She felt so defeated that she didn't even feel any sense of humiliation in front of Lucas. Thank you so much for coming to help me. In exchange, I'll let you in on an important secret. Lucas lifted his eyebrows, wondering what he was about to hear. He instructed his lawyer to bail Ariadne out and then led her to the car. Ariadne was silent at first, but in the end, she couldn't hold back her tears any longer. She burst out crying. Lucas just looked at her. He didn't offer any words of comfort, but simply handed her a tissue. I can't compete with Emma, she finally said, her voice thick with tears. I admit it. I'm defeated. I'm going to leave New York. I can't win against her. I can only go somewhere and hide. You don't need to leave, Lucas started to say. Yes, I do. Ariadne dried her tears and lifted her head to look at Lucas seriously. In order to prevent Charlotte from kicking you out of H-World, you have to keep Richard and Emma from advancing too far. Otherwise, as soon as Charlotte trains someone new, she'll make you leave. She won't feel bad about it either. And I promised you a secret. Part of the reason Emma's been so successful is that she has someone backing her. Lucas looked surprised. This was not what he'd been expecting to hear. Shirley and her vision told me this, and I've seen that it must be true. She paused for a moment, thinking about her future. I really don't want to throw myself back into this mess. I seem to have already angered whoever's behind her. 
Ariadne sniffed loudly and continued, Maybe you'll have some use for this secret. Of course, no matter who the person backing Emma is, we at least know that Emma's no longer acting entirely on her own. You've helped me so much in the past. I hope that this knowledge helps you with something. Lucas sat silently for a moment, thinking about what Ariadne had just said. He finally pulled out a gold card from his wallet and handed it to Ariadne. No matter where you go, you'll need some money. Take this. Ariadne looked at Lucas as tears started flowing down her face. What's the point of all the fighting? She said. In the end, I have nothing. Episode 143, Big Boss Eric Can't Relax. Lucas's thoughts and emotions were complicated. He hadn't been comfortable with Ariadne's actions, but witnessing her defeat left him with a terrible sadness. He tried to express himself, but at first, no words would come out. When Ariadne stopped crying, he finally asked, Where do you want to go? I'll take you there. There's no need, Ariadne responded, shaking her head. I've done a lot of bad things to you over the years. I did them out of anger because you made me abort our child. So I never felt that I've owed you anything. But now, I do owe you. After speaking, she opened the car door and left. Lucas sat for some time in the car, his thoughts going round and round. He'd actually forgotten that his problems with Ariadne had all stemmed from the pregnancy. He just attributed everything that had happened to being in the toxic world of entertainment. Alone in the dark, Lucas laughed a little. For all her scheming, Ariadne was actually quite naive. She had never realized that he'd been helping her for years. If I hadn't helped her, he thought, she never would have gotten so far in her career. Her arrogant attitude would have annoyed too many people. He couldn't deny that he still had feelings for her, but there was no way he would ever risk a relationship with her again. At that time, the power in H-World was equally divided. He had Hillary to manage, and Richard had Emma. Cheryl, who was previously worked with Ariadne, was temporarily in the hands of the company's vice president. From the looks of it, the battle for the best resources was about to start. So Emma has someone backing her, huh? He thought. I guess that's the way of the world. But this information really doesn't help me at all. First, I have no idea who it is. And second, if the person behind Emma is really that powerful, she would have moved up in the world long ago. The incident with Ariel, though, did result in Emma moving up in the world. Her presentation of the results of the drug test and the consequences for Ariel showed everyone that she was going to fight hard for her place in the industry. Her reputation for being trustworthy soared, and many valuable offers began to pour in, including major brand endorsements. As a result, Emma's schedule became completely jam-packed. Except for the three days she currently had off, the following month would be crammed full with multiple jobs. Richard was kept very busy with all the scheduling. The night before heading to Moscow to shoot the assignment for her vision studio, Richard called Emma. Tomorrow, we have a quick meeting at H-World to confirm all your upcoming plans. Are you sure you don't want to go to the airport with me for the flight to Moscow? What if something happens? Emma and Eric were in the middle of packing their luggage. She turned to look at Eric and smiled. If something happens, I'll handle it, she said. Just so you know, Richard persisted. If something goes wrong, I'm not going to let you brush me off so easily next time. Nothing will go wrong, Emma replied reassuringly. I hope you're right, Richard said. But the truth was that in comparison to other artists... Emma had a remarkable ability to handle whatever came her way. She was calm and self-disciplined, which helped put Richard's mind at rest. So he didn't push any further. After all, 
She'd already been in the industry for quite a number of years and was well aware of how things operated. She hung up the phone. Eric finished placing some clothes in the suitcase and approached her from behind. He breathed in her scent as he wrapped her in his embrace. I haven't showered yet, she said, resisting a little. I don't mind at all, Eric responded, his voice deep and rumbling. He reached out his hand to gently stroke her soft, flowing hair. I've looked at some of the jobs Richard has accepted for you. They will indeed be helpful to your career. From what I can see, he seems to have good control over the fans and has a team of well-experienced helpers. Little Miss Emma is no longer working on her own. She turned her head and looked into his obsidian-like eyes as she chuckled. Does that mean that Big Boss Eric can finally relax? Eric lowered his head and placed his chin on Emma's shoulder. Where you and your career are at stake, I don't think I can ever relax. And that's why, even though I'm sure it will be exhausting, you're still planning to accompany me to Moscow. Emma gently stroked Eric's cheek as her heart filled with love for this man. I'm not so sure it will be exhausting, he responded. That all depends on who I'm going with. He turned back to his packing and said, It's snowing there. Don't forget to pack more warm clothing than you think you'll need. The entertainment news continued to focus on Ariel's drug use, her injury, and speculation over whether she would be disfigured. As for Louisa, she was also taken in for questioning after it was revealed that she had lied about Ariel's age on official documents. The online community expressed a mix of emotions. It was hard not to feel sorry for Louisa, but she and her daughter had done so many outrageous things. One thing quickly became clear. The use of the term Mini Emma had faded from sight. Interestingly, mentions of Ariadne had also faded away. She should have been able to change companies, even if she could no longer be a manager at H-World. However, Eric had instructed Luke to quietly reach out to companies in related industries and let them know that if they wanted to keep doing business with Kaleidoscope, they shouldn't hire Ariadne. He wanted to see if she could change, if, without her high wages and special treatment, she would continue being evil and arrogant. The next morning, Richard drove Emma to H-World Entertainment for a meeting. Just as they were about to head into the meeting room, they heard someone cry out, Emma! Emma looked back to see a woman heading her way. Dressed in light blue, she was tall, with clearly defined features and a strong jaw. Her beautiful blue eyes matched the color of her clothes. It took a moment, but then Emma recognized her. It was Cheryl May. Her features made her seem a little intimidating but her tone of voice indicated that she was very friendly. Hi, Cheryl, Emma said, acknowledging her with a nod. Are you here for a meeting? Cheryl asked. Yes, I am, she responded, low-key as always. In that case, fight on, Cheryl said enthusiastically. I've seen your shows. You're amazing. Emma just smiled at her in thanks, and Richard pushed open the meeting room door. We need to go in, he said, or we're going to be late. Cheryl watched them enter the meeting room, thinking about what she knew of Emma. Her assistant was clear about her own thoughts. This new model doesn't know her place in this business. Hillary is the only one of all the models in h -world who's anywhere close to your level. Who does Emma think she is? She should be bowing down to you. Instead, she could barely summon up a smile. Watch what you're saying. Cheryl warned her assistant softly. But her assistant was on a roll and couldn't stop. Ariadne's resignation was obviously planned by the three of them. Richard, Emma, and Charlotte all had to be in on it. And you know that vice president's useless. He's got no power to take control of any of the resources. Emma made us lose Ariadne, and I'm furious about it. Cheryl didn't respond, lost in her own thoughts. 
Isn't Emma going to Moscow for her magazine shoot, she wondered. She was familiar with the photography team that her vision often used. They'd previously shot a big commercial together. It was fine that Emma didn't bow down to her, but she wasn't willing to let the incident with Ariadne go just like that. Especially since all along it had only been her and Hillary fighting for resources. Thinking about what had happened with Ariadne, Cheryl now grew angry. How dare she show up out of nowhere and take the best manager? Cheryl thought furiously. What right does she have to push anyone else out of the way? And just who does she think she is?